Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good day. Good Sunday. Welcome to the show. Listen, I'm glad to have you guys here. I'm going to tell you guys what. This is going to be an important show. So spread it on social media and tell your friends about it and, you know, and, and get them to come and see it because th this is something that you're not going to see anywhere else, but it's facts. And I'm going to get right into it. Let's start the show right, uh, start the charts right here and take a look at what's going on. Uh, the first thing you got to know is everybody out there is concentrating right now on the election. Who won, whatever, you know? And the thing is they're not concentrating on is what a president's power, the power a president has, a sitting president. Now, President Donald Trump is a sitting president. This is a fact right now, and he's going to be a sitting president for, for a number of period of time into the future. Uh, like, what is it, almost almost three months, I guess? It's, it's until twenty the 20th of January, which is into the new year even, almost through the first month of the new year. Uh, president Donald Trump is a sitting president. And sitting presidents have a tremendous amount of power, now, I'm not going to go through this entire article here uh, about six insane things that a president can do in a crisis, but uh, we're going to move down. Guys, guys. Army. Army. Hold on, guys. <laughs> That's perfect. perfect. There. <laughs> I hate those pop-ups. Anyway, I'm going to talk about what a president can actually do during a crisis here in this article. I'm going to move down on the page, you know. One one of the things that they can do, uh, that they consider to be insane, is uh, where is it here? Uh, they can uh, regulate all commerce and business transactions under the Trading with the Enemy Act of 1917. The president is allowed to regulate all the finances of the United States, including all international transactions. This means that the president of the United States, under crisis conditions, can take control of the Fed. He can regulate all commerce and business transactions. Now, that in itself is incredibly powerful. They can seize all privately held gold stores, and they have done this in the past, but this is not likely to happen, you know. Um, but not impossible. They can tra take control of all the media in the United States. You see this, number three. They can take control of all of the media in the United States. Under the Communications Act of 1934, the President can establish the Office of Telecommunications Management, which oversees all media and telecommunications. So basically, they can shut down media, any media they want, a, pre a, a sitting executive uh, a, a President. This is called Executive Order 10995. Okay? But there's more, guys. There's more. Uh, they can capture all resources and manpower through <clears throat> executive orders 10997, 10999, uh, 11,000, 11,001, 11,002, 11,003, 11,004, and 11,005. They can capture all resources and manpower. They can deploy the military within the United States uh, during a crisis. This is a Posse Communicatus Act of, of 1878. They can even suspend the government of the United States. Now, this is a big one, number six, and this is the one I'm going to focus on today in this show. They can suspend the government of the United States. A presidential directive signed by George W. Bush on May 9, 2007, gives the President of the United States the authority to take over all government functions. All government functions. Can you imagine? And all private sector activities in the event of a catastrophic emergency. Now, we're going to point to this point right here. The only way that this particular number six right here, which would be Directive 51, can be enacted, is under a catastrophic emergency. 
a catastrophic emergency. Now, we're going to dig in a little bit deeper into what a catastrophic emergency would be. <clears throat> Uh, in the United States of America, what what a catastrophic emergency would look like, you know, in in the United States of America, and uh, I believe that this is the act right here: National Security and Homeland Security of the President pre Presidential Directive. It's Directive Fifty One under the National and Homeland Security Presidential Directive, and but it would only be enacted. I want to make this point very clear: under a catastrophic emergency. Now, here's the thing. If we go down here on this page, uh, where was it? Uh, okay, let's, let's go over here to the powers of the President of the United States. And we'll pull down here and uh, powers related to res uh, powers of appointment, uh, executive clemency, uh, emergency powers. Here it is right here. It says, the Constitution does not expressly grant the President additional powers in the time of a national emergency. However, many scholars think that, that the framers implied these powers because of the structural design of the executive branch enables it to act faster than legislative branch. Because the Constitution remains silent on the issue, the courts cannot grant the executive branch these powers when it tries to wield them. Uh, it, the courts will only recognize the right of the executive branch to use emergency powers if Congress has granted such powers to the president. Uh, emergency presidential powers is not a new idea. Now, if we go down here and check here, that uh, it says Harry Truman declared the use of emergency powers when he nationalized the private steel mills. And... Uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt similarly invoked emergency powers when he issued the order directing all Japanese Americans residing on the West Coast to be placed in internment camps. Uh, President Lincoln uh, even suspended uh, the use of habeas corpus uh, without congressional approval in 1861. Uh, now, here's the thing about this, is they have these what's called P-E-A-D-S, -E PEADS. And uh, according to research conducted at the Brennan Center of New York University Law School Administration, since Eisenhower has drafted secret presidential emergency ac ac action documents, they're called PEADS. That assertion, one government document described as extraordinary presidential authority in response to extraordinary situations. So basically what we're looking at here is these PEADS will come into effect under what's called extraordinary situations. So uh, they will give the president extraordinary presidential authority in response to extraordinary situations. Okay? Now let's think about this for a minute. We're in the middle of a pandemic right now. I come on the news last night. I was listening to the to the news, you know. And it said that a lot of the states in the United States are declaring states of emergency. Right now. Right now they're declaring states of emergency. Uh, the hospitals are packed. I also heard that one doctor was talking and he said that they're actually having to resort to making choices about what patients they're going to give care to, right? They're actually having to choose between patients. Uh, okay, let's give this guy uh, whatever, you know. Well, we can't give him because we, we're just running out of staff. They're running out of everything. So they're having to make critical choices within the hospitals in the United States. Now, this is happening right now, if you can believe that. In America, I mean, it's already getting to the point where we could we could almost call, call it extraordinary situations. And that's what's listed here is extraordinary situations. But from what I'm hearing is, is if we take a look at this, 
COVID virus. And this is a chart of the COVID virus right now. What we can see is this, this curve has went exponential. It's going almost straight up right now in the United States of America. This is a dire situation. Uh, how much room does it have to grow? Does it have to grow in the United States? Well, you know, right now we're seeing like, what is it? I forget exactly what the number is, but it's over 10 million people have it. But there's 350 million people in the United States, guys. And this leaves it actually a lot of room to go, grow. Uh, now, there's months here that, that the president is going to be the sitting president until the 20th of January. Okay? That's quite a long time away. That's like months away. This thing is growing extraordinarily fast in the United States. And... I think it's the cool weather that's making it grow like this, uh, making it expand. I think it's the cool weather, the cool weather setting in. Well, the cool weather's not going to go away. It's going to get worse. And I don't see any relief in sight. This thing is growing exponentially in the United States. Now, how much room does it have to grow? We should consider this because this could, you know, I'm not saying it will, but I'm saying it very well could cause extraordinary circumstances. It could cause the, uh, if we go back to this page right here, the uh, catastrophic emergency. This is what I'm going to focus on right here. And what I'm actually thinking is, is if this thing grows too much from where it is right now, and what do I mean by too much? I mean that in the next month or two, this thing's doubling. If you can believe that, it's doubling. Now, how much of it there is in the United States right now could quite literally, before before the end of the year, quite literally, it could be double this. Can you imagine double this? I mean, they're already they're filling uh, temporary morgues. They don't have any place to put the bodies. They're 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 putting them in, in in cooling trucks, parked cooling trucks and stuff. You know, they're already setting up uh, temporary uh, hospital units and stuff like that. You know, and if this thing, can you imagine if this thing doubles? And then there's a possibility that it could even almost by the time January twentieth comes, it could almost double again. So double and double again, that'd be four times as many people in the United States with this thing before the end of this winter. Okay? So could we call this a catastrophic emergency if, if it doubles like that and it doubles again before, before, the, uh, uh, before January 20th? Could we actually call this a catastrophic emergency? And if, if it is... I'm just theorizing, guys, right now. Well, you know, I'm just theorizing. But if it is called a catastrophic emergency, technically, and these powers are enacted, how long would these powers last? Well, you know, probably until the virus starts to go away. And when will the virus go away? Who knows? Maybe a year from now? I just don't know, you know? Before the cat, before these catastrophic emergency would end, uh, we got to think about these things, and we got to think about what would happen if if Directive Fifty One, this piece of legislation called Directive Fifty One, were enacted with the sitting president. You know, uh, how bad could this virus get before they finally uh, are able to do to, to bring it under control and manage it? We know ultimately. If we look out into the future, we know ultimately they are going to be able to bring this thing under control and manage, manage it. But how much larger is it going to grow from this point forward before they are actually able to bring it under control and management uh, and manage it? And under a catastrophic emergency, what would happen? Well, you guys, I'm going to tell you what I think would happen. One of the biggest things that would happen under a catastrophic, if it is claimed to be a catastrophic emergency, and they do to go to this legislation called Directive 51. I'm just saying if. I'm just theorizing now, guys, at this point. But what I think would actually happen is 
is I think they would print like mad. I think, I think, I think ultimately everything would close down and they, they would print like mad. They would be sending checks to everybody in the United States. They would rush in this central bank digital currency. They would rush it in as, a, as maybe an act, an, an act. Uh, they would, they would rush it in place having presidential authority under the um, catastrophic emergency act. They would rush it in place so that they could keep the American citizens from starving to death. Basically, that's what it would amount to, because almost nobody would be able to work, because everybody would be scared, everybody would be staying at home. This thing would grow exponentially larger. It's growing exponentially larger right now. Like over 100,000 people a day are coming down with this thing. Winter's coming on, you know? And this is, this is going to make, this is the flu season. And this thing is, is it's like a head cold. It, it has ties to head colds. In fact, there are head colds out there that are coronavirus head colds, right? So this thing is very closely related to a head cold. It's more like a killer head cold. Picture a killer head cold. That's what this thing is. It's a killer coronavirus head cold. Uh, but it's it it's a little bit worse cold than most. It's basically a head cold. It's a head cold on steroids. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so ultimately, where could this thing go is I could see if this thing continues to grow exponentially, uh, it's going to be in almost every neighborhood. You're going to see people coughing and sneezing and, and hacking and, and spitting and, and, and everything else. You know, they're going to come out of their house to go get the mail and hack, hack, cough, cough, barely be able to breathe, has a fever, goes back inside the house and doesn't bother going to the hospital because the hospital's already overflowing. They take their chances at home. If this thing grows exponentially, that's what you're going to see. You're going to see quite literally people can't go to the hospital because they won't get any care. At least at home they'll get some care, and they know that. The hospitals will have a line around the block. That's what you'll see if this thing continues to grow, you know. And it could, I, I can see it causing a catastrophic emergency. Now, this is missed my viewpoint on it, but if it grows four times between now and January, larger, I mean, four times as many people. In other words, it's doubling every so many days, you know. And at the rate it's going right now, it's like doubling every, I don't know, maybe every 20 days or 30 days or something, you know. And then it'll double again, you know. And it'll just keep going until it reaches a point of saturation. But we're a long ways from that. It could quite literally, before it reaches a point of saturation of the population and, and, and does what's called herd immunity, it could, it could go 10 times larger than it is now. There's that many people in the United States. There's that many people out there right now who haven't had this thing. That it could go 10 times bigger. 10 times what it is right now. And I'm just saying that I'm thinking that that would be a catastrophic emergency. And that these presidential powers of Directive 51 would probably be enacted if it does that. Now, that's just me. I mean, I don't know. That's just my viewpoint on it. I don't know what you guys' viewpoint is, but, you know, this is something we need to pay close attention to because we can ignore it all we want, but our friends and neighbors are all getting sick and everything, and, you know, we might get sick, and, I mean, this has gone out of control, you know, at this point. And, yeah, an awful lot of people that get it are only going to have it like a head cold, Maybe some of them will think they have a head cold, and they don't really have a head cold. They really got this thing, but they won't get hit that hard with it. Some people get whacked really hard with it, and some people don't. A lot of people don't. Uh, so anyway, this is the situation that we're in, and this is what I wanted to point out to you guys is these powers, the powers that the president have, do not underestimate the power that the president has, a sitting president. It's It's amazing. I mean, I was just looking this stuff up, and I was, like, a little bit shocked at the amount of power the sitting president has. Thank you guys for listening to this show. Like and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. And we'll catch you guys in the very next episode. Bye-bye.